What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. Today we've got the absolute pleasure of testing out a new product that hasn't even hit the market yet. It's a all-in-one screw and drill bit. That's right, screw and drill bit, no pilot hole needed. That can go through timber, metal and even masonry guys. Let's get straight into it. Let's do this. So what we've got here today guys is a product from Bremick called Multi One. In case you guys haven't heard of Bremick before, they are a huge company with a huge reputation. The vast majority of infrastructure here in Australia, including bridges and skyscrapers, have been built using Bremick products. So you know they're a very reliable company. They've come up with a new invention here. We've got a all-in-one screw and drill bit. That means we don't have to create pilot holes. We can use the screw straight into the material. And when it comes to the material, we can see here metal, hardwood, softwood, concrete, masonry, plastic. Unbelievable, guys. This here is the screw that we're looking at. So we'll have a closer look at that in a second. But usually, this is what I'd be using. So when we have a look at my storage organizers, I've got everything separated. I've got my metal screws here on the left timber screws here on the right, I've got my drill bits in order to drill my pilot holes, but now we've got a brand new all-in-one product that can do all three. So if we have a close look at the threads here, we've got a very unique design on the multi-one screw. On the right hand side we've got a standard metal screw, on the left we've got a standard timber screw. You can see here the threads are very close together on the metal screw. We've got a self-tapping point down the bottom, which means it's going to create the pilot hole for us, no pre-drilling required. Very similar to what's on the multi one. The timber screw, you can see the threads are a lot wider apart. On the multi one, you can see it's incorporated both the designs, plus we've also got a serrated section. So you can see there, there's little sections being cut out of the bottom threads. We're going to be able to get through that tougher material nice and easy. It's also got a section here with no threads so that we can squeeze those materials together. And on the top here, we've got little nibs. That's going to help us embed that into the material, getting a nice clean flush finish. If we have a look at the top here, it uses a star drive or a Torx drive um, bit. And the reason for that is because we're going to be putting a lot of force running through multiple materials, you want to prevent any kind of slippage or damage to the head. So that's the reason why we use a star drive here. All right, guys, let's get the testing underway. First thing we're going to check is if it does, in fact, create the pilot hole for us. The easiest way to do that is we're going to use some softwood. We've got some trim here and I'm going to put a screw really close to the edge and see if it splits the wood. If you don't create a pilot hole, generally that would split the wood. So what we're going to do first, start off with a regular screw. So we've got here a 30mm screw used for timber. And what we're going to do is see if it splits the wood without a pilot hole. You can see there, instantly split the wood. Let's take this one here out. Try the same thing with our multi one screw. So we're going to use a 30mm multi one screw once again. Doesn't seem to want to focus every time, but let's try this one here out. Perfect, guys. That's exactly what I'm after. So now we know for sure that it's actually creating that pilot hole for us. All right, guys, this time around, we're going to test it out on some hardwood. We've got 20 mil of hardwood here. We're going to double it up, making it 40 mil of hardwood. We'll first try a regular screw and then we'll switch over to the multi one and see what kind of differences there are. So let's try, try this one here out, 30mm, typical timber screw. What I really like is the balance as well. You can see here there's a lot more play on the screw head compared to a Torx drive. So a Torx drive is a lot better, especially when it comes to hardwood. Even through that, we've split the timber once again. So let's see how much difference there is when we switch it over. So that one there's definitely gone through. So once again with the multi-screw, you can see how much better that one there just sits in there. I can shake it around and the screw doesn't come out. You can see there, we've got that one there all the way through when this one here decides to focus for you guys. Doesn't seem to want to focus, but hopefully you guys can see there, it actually hasn't split the wood whatsoever and we've got a perfect little finish. So just in case you guys couldn't see it in the last video, we'll do it one more time. Regular 30mm timber screw, new location. And you can see there we've split that all the way across. Not very nice at all. Let's try it again with the multi one, switch over to the Torx. That's such a solid bite. I really like that Torx drive. Back to back out. Drive it in again. 
I've completely embedded that section in there guys and it doesn't split the wood whatsoever. Alright guys, this time around we're going to test out the screws on some metal. What I'm going to be using is some fence posts. So this is very common material that I would drill through on a regular basis. We're going to use our contour head, dome head, wafer head, whatever you like to call them. It's basically going to sit flush up against the surface. So we've got our regular wafer head here, um, Phillips head drive. We're going to try that one out first. Then we're going to switch over to the multi one using the star drive. So let's test these ones here out. Starting off with our wafer. You can see there that one does go in. It is designed to squeeze two materials together. That's why we don't get that final ratchet action. Um, but so far so good. Does its job as usual. We'll switch over to the multi one. Test out the multi one. That one there was definitely a lot quicker. So very, very nice. We got that ratchet action right at the end where we could hear the bite really secure um, hold there. Let's try it out with some timber and some metal and see how that works out. So once again we're using our piece of hardwood then we've got our steel post right over the top. We're going to try it first with our uh, dome head, contour head, wafer head. Try that one out first and then we'll switch over to a countersunk. Three, two, one. <laughs> Nice. You could feel it when it got to the second piece of material and then it just automatically went straight through. So that one there nicely held in with one screw. Let's switch over to the countersunk and we'll see how that one there works out. So this time around with the countersunk head or the truss head, we'll do the exact same thing. Three, two, one. Wow. Now that you can see how much pull that had straight through that material. Alright guys, this time around we're testing it out on masonry and what we've got here is a concrete paver. In this case here, we still require plugs, but what's interesting is this is the screw as well as the drill bit. So that uh, masonry drill bit is right here in my hand as well as the screw. I'll show you guys what I mean. We're using the Torx bit. We've got it on hammer drive now. So you can see there we've got it on hammer function. What we're going to do is take that screw and create our pilot hole first and foremost. So now that we've got that hole in there, what we're going to do is back that back out. We'll take out the screw. And once that hole's been drilled, we can then take a plug, tap that into place, cut off any of the excess that you don't need in order to get it nice and flush. Then we're going to take the same screw that we just used as a drill bit, turn this one here back over to drill mode and drive that one into the plug. There you have it guys, nice and tight. So this time around we're going to attach the hardwood timber to the masonry. Very common application when you're hanging shelves or picture frames or anything to a brick or cement wall. Um, so what we're going to do in this case here is we're going to use the hammer drill once again and we're going to use the countersunk head. So the ones um, also known as a truss head. Reason for that is we can embed that into the actual timber itself. So what we're going to do, hammer drill on, drive it straight through. Once we hit our surface, we can back that one here off, or you can keep drilling through. But what I'm going to do in this case here, back it off, mark up my other position. Once it hits it again, back it off. We can then move our timber out of the way, and we can pre-drill this area here. So using the same screw, and then repeat the process on our other hole. And you can see that it's actually biting into the timber that's on this bench. Back that one there off. We'll take our plugs, tap them in. If you need to cut off any excess, you can do that. Put it back on drill mode. Start them off. So we just drill it through until it pokes out the back end. Line that up with our plugs. And then we can drill this one here in. And then we've got a nice secure timber to the masonry application. So there we have it guys, after all that testing, obviously this one screw can do three different materials. Nice and easy, simple little screw that's very very handy to have laying around. 
in case you're not sure which screw you need to use or you don't have the right screw available at the time one of these will get you out of trouble so that's the multi one screw from Bremick guys if you've got any questions suggestions any other follow-up videos that you guys would like to see or any other testing let me know in the comment section below hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video as always like comment and subscribe until next time I'm Bill thanks for watching Bill's How To